Right, for question one, let's take a look. Uh, what does it mean when we say we have uh, 15 students scoring one mark? So we have the first student over here scoring one mark and the 15th student here scoring one mark. Now 12 students score two marks, so we can queue them up from the 16th student to the 27th student and X students scoring three marks, 15 students scoring four and five marks, right? Now the question says that the median is two which means the median mark must be either the 16th position or the 27th position, right? So median means is the middle, which means if I want a big value of x, I should choose the last person, uh, the last position of the student scoring two marks, which is the number 27th person. So on the left, beside on the left of the 27 person, there are all together 26. So you have 26 here. And this 26 must be equal to the right hand side of the of this person, which is x plus 15, which is also equals to 26. So solving this equation, you will have x equals to 11. Now 1b is quite straightforward. Uh, I want to use the value of 11, then I want to find the mean and standard deviation. So uh, check that your answer of summation fx, summation fx squared, uh, summation f, and then you can calculate for mean and the standard deviation. Now moving down, question 2, a, now it says that the mean uh, weight is 3.5 kg and they are all together 20 watermelons, right? So 20 watermelon means if I to add all the frequency together, it should be equals to 20. And if the mean is 3.5, it also means that I take 2 times 1.5 because the mid value between 1 to 2 is 1.5. The mid value between 2 and 3 is 2.5 and so on. You have two equations. By solving the two equations, you will have Q equals to 7 and P equals to 3. Now, moving on, the 2B. Alright, so for 2B, I want to calculate standard deviation. First, I need to calculate the summation of fx, so check it is 70. Summation of f, summation of fx squared, uh, and put it into the formula, you should get 0 0.949. For question 3, when I want to look for the range, you'll be taking the biggest value minus the smallest value. I want to find the mean, same thing, I will take frequency times the mid value. And then divided by uh, the total frequency, which is 4, 0. So check that the mean is this. Summation fx squared, check that this, uh, this value. And you can calculate for the standard deviation. Let's look at D. Uh, if we have five more ducks, each weighing 1.3 kg added, the current mean is 0 0.965. So if I were to add 5 more ducks of 1.3 kg, it will actually increase the mean, alright? Right, next, let's check on uh, question 4, the mean length. Uh, so basically, I will take all the length, add them together, divide by the total number of nails. So check the mean is correct. For standard deviation, same thing. Now we will take uh, each individual value, square it, then uh, divide by total frequency minus mean square and check the answer is uh, as such. Now for B, uh, which one is more consistent? Uh, we can refer to the answer behind. M is more consistent because the standard deviation is lower. Now for question 5, again is uh, checking of your summation uh, fx to see whether it's correct. So 0 to 19, I take the mid value will be 10. So summation fx over summation f, check that the value is 25.6. Similarly for standard deviation, check that the answer is uh, 22.4. So check that the 
summation f x square and uh, summation the 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 the, the subtract or the mean square is uh, as such. Right. Let's look at five b. Since uh, the average age is younger, we say that uh, for the mean it must be between zero to uh, smaller than that of uh, part A, uh, the first outlet. So the first outlet mean is 25.6, so it must be smaller than 25.6. Now because it's wider spread, so we say that uh, it must be between 22.4 and up to a maximum of 99. So how do I get a 99 here? Is actually the, 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 the limit for the edge in the first outlet. Alright, for 6 part a part 1, the medium mark of the math test. So look at the the middle, the medium line. Trace it down, you should get 64. Uh, state which one has the lowest interquartile range. So see which rectangle is the smallest, right? So Q3 minus Q1 is the smallest. So in this case, it's English test. Uh, compare the performance. So always... Uh, Compare with uh, the median and say uh, which one is better. Always compare the interquartile range and say which one is uh, better. Alright. For A part 4, uh, alright, so for A part 4, if you look at 70 marks, uh, mathematics, he is uh, between the 50% to the 70%, 75%, right? But for English, you see that he is clearly uh, the top 25% because he's after the, the third quartile line. For Chinese, uh, she happened to be the on the dot, right? She is the 75 percentile. So out of the three, uh, the English test, he performed the best. Right, let's take a look at 6B, uh, same thing. We look at the mean. Uh, you just want to check the value of your summation uh, fx and your mean value. Check your summation fx square and then your standard deviation value. Alright, so which one is more accurate? We say that machine B is more accurate because uh, it has a bigger mean which is nearer to the standard mean of 5 kg, right? And because the standard deviation is smaller, so it is more consistent. Right, for question 7, uh, we want to find out, uh, using the cumulative frequency graph uh, to compute for the group frequency table. So it's more like a reverse step, so let's take a look. Uh, between 15 to 20 students, so it will be somewhere here. So we do a tracing, there are only two students. Between 20 to 25, we look at 20 to 25. If I look, trace up to 25, altogether there are eight students. I need to s minus off um, the first data, so minus off two. And I have six students that is between 20 to 25. When we look at 25 to 30, Again, we are looking at um, the value here, and this value is 18. So I got to take 18 minus of uh, 8, right, to get 10, and so on and so forth. All right. Now, once I have the table for part B, it is uh, again the same thing. I just need to. Uh, right, let's look at part B, yeah. Uh. Part B says 84% pass the marks. So if I take 84% times 50 students, I actually get uh, 42 students. Now if I look at 42 students over here, uh, 42 students actually get 40 marks. But if you put 40 marks, the answer is wrong. Because if, it's, if 40 marks is the passing mark, that means you're looking at 40 and beyond. We are only looking at the eight students on top, right? So only eight students get um, 40 marks. So this is not correct. So what you need to do is to take 50 minus 42.
two students, alright, and we get eight students. So from the eight students, we draw a line down and twenty five marks. That means uh, only eight students get less than twenty five marks, which means forty two students get more than twenty five marks. Alright. Now let's take a look at um, C. Uh, the D part. So to calculate the mean and also the SD alright so check that uh, you have this as your answer so for the mean uh, summation of fx you will get 1630 uh, summation of fx square you get this number and then uh, mean you will get 32.6 standard deviation you will get uh, 7.11 alright now, uh, for the last question, if 50 students uh, are having a better and more consistent, so better marks means the mean is higher, more consistent means uh, it has a st lower SD. Right, let's look at question 8. Now, if we say that the mode is uh, 2 and 3, that means most number of students have 2 or 3 students. And since uh, 12 students have 2 siblings, uh, 12 students must have uh, 3 siblings as well and hence x equals to 12 now for a part 2 uh, if the medium is 3 and I want to find the smallest value of x we will take the first student that having 3 siblings uh, to be the median so if this is the median uh, it means that uh, number of students on the left must be equal to number of students on the right. So we zoom in and look at the, the, the number of students having three siblings. Since we have taken out the first student, uh, there will be x minus one uh, students having three siblings. All right, and then I add another five uh, over here, right? So we say that oh, eight plus 12 must be equal to x minus one plus five. So if I work it out, x will be equal to 16. Now, looking at b, uh, it's uh, just a computation of the formula. So check that summation fx is uh, 82. Summation fx squared is to 2, 6. Uh, the sd will be uh, 0 0.984. Now let's look at question 9. Uh, take note that the maximum number of students is uh, not 400, it's 380. So just do a check on uh, the median, the upper quartile, the interquartile range, as well as the percentage of students that score more than uh, 46 marks. Uh, do take note, uh, more than 46 marks means uh, I need to calculate uh, 46 students, I trace up, uh, it actually gives me 300, right? So 300 students actually score less than 46 marks. So if I want more than 46 marks, I have to take the total number of students minus uh, students who score less than 36 marks, 46 marks, which is 80 students. So from there, I then can calculate the percentage. Now looking at part B, So if I want 5% to score a distinction rate, uh, first I can calculate what is that 5%. 5% uh, is 19 students. So if I want the top 19 students, I have to take total number of students minus the 19 students and calculate uh, what is the score of this, uh, this student, right? So based on the graph, it is 57 marks. Uh, similarly, I want to calculate the frequency so I can look at um, the graph itself. So between 10 to 20, I will take uh, at 20, there are 65 students. So I'll take 65 minus at 10, there are 20 students. So minus 20, so I got 45. So I can repeat the process to find out uh, the frequency table over here. 
So just want you to check that summation fx is this value, summation fx squared is this value, the mean is this, and the SD is this. Okay, now looking at D, uh, the median is over here. The interquartile range is taking the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. The range is taking the biggest value minus the smallest value. Uh, comment the marks in both in two ways. So you may look at the answer, the medium is higher which means the school did better in the quarter range is higher that means it's more widespread and for f uh, it says school p put in more effort it's not true because the median is lower that means the result is poorer now let's take a look at question 10 now for a part one i want to find the value of P, I have to take the value at 60 students to trace up minus the number of students that score 55 marks. Alright, then you get 150 and 80 uh, as well. Okay, now, so state the model class, uh, it will be the one with the highest number of students so in this case it's uh, over here between 55 to 60 for b i want to calculate the mean weight so check that summation fx is this and the mean weight is as such right use the graph to calculate the medium weight the interquartile range And the number of students who weigh more than 72 kg, so check. For part D, uh, do a tracing, uh, reading from the graph, 58 kg, they are altogether 155 students. So if I look at the question, they want probability of choosing the student, right? So it will be 155 over 500. So after I simplify, I'll get 31 over 100. Alright, for the answer, uh, refer to the answer at the back. Now for question 11, um, median means I want to look at the 20th student. So you can calculate the median. You can also read the median for condition B. Uh, same for the IQR, uh, check the values. So I want to calculate the mean and standard deviation. First, I have to uh, reconstruct the frequency table. So from 0 to 2, uh, there are 0 plants, as you can see here. The mean value will be just 1. Right? Between 2 to 4, the mean value is 3. And if I trace out, uh, the value uh, there are five students having uh, there are five plants having uh, the lifespan of four and then uh, subsequently between four to six I read at six I have 15 so 15 minus five I'll get the number of plants that have uh, between four to six uh, lifespan right and the mid value is five so work out for A and B, and then check the value for uh, the summation fx, summation fx square, the mean, and the standard deviation for both condition A and condition D. Okay. So the intersection of the two um, conditions uh, are as stated. And uh, which one is more conducive? Uh, actually, is condition B because it has a higher median and also a lower IQR. Now, for question 12, uh, it's kind of a working backwards. So if I want to find the mean of uh, 50 uh, numbers, I have to first find the sum of the 50 numbers, right? So I, as I add these two together, 
I divide by the by 50 by the total number here but for SD you notice that uh, you, you don't have the summation fx square so first I have to use the SD of the 20 numbers to calculate summation of fx square for the 20 numbers similarly summation of fx square for the 30 numbers then I can uh, calculate the standard deviation for the 50 numbers.